All right, today's business, we're gonna do this AHM SD40 I got right here. You can see I got stuff laid out. We're gonna do this SD40. Here's the body. This thing is mostly, it, it is in parts, and it's missing some parts that we have to make. We're gonna redo this thing and make it into a 24 volt motor. As you can see here, we're missing a coupling. So we're going to try and use the tap and die set and this uh, tubing here. See if we can't make a new coupling and then we can make the drive shafts. Then we're going to put in this 24 volt rare earth super strong magnet motor, which I love these things. Um, I haven't seen any motor that compares to this ever. It's, right now, this is, this is as good as it gets. Then we're going to rewire it again like we usually do. We use the Strive Day stuff. And we're going to add some pickup to these trucks. As you know, these trucks here, they have two powered axles and one, un, one unpowered axle. And we're going to see if we can't get a little bit. They only pick up from two axles on one side each. We're going to see if we can change that. See if we can get all, all the wheels to pick up. Then we should have a real nice SD40 here, ready to roll. We're going to put on some KD number no. 5 couplers too. Okay, before we can continue on and get down to doing some, some motors, we need to go ahead and get our power trucks uh, taken care of. And basically, this here is an AHM SD40 and there it is got the shell or I've got the frame painted the way I want it to get started I've cut out the tabs and stuff that's where my 24 volt motor will go I'll make a little platform and put that in there and I need to get the power trucks, which are right here, set to go. Now these trucks, they only have two geared axles, as you know, and one trailing axle that does that does not have power. And not only that, they only picked up power from one side each on two wheels. We're going to change that. We're going to go ahead and pick up from all wheels. And but before we can do that, one of the most important things to do on these is we've got to get we got to get them disassembled and then washed carefully. Um, one of the most important things is at the end at the end of the worm gear, you got this piece here and down here I've got another one and that's we're gonna start with that there's a tiny little washer called thrust washer that goes between these little caps and the worm those thrust washers are very important but what they need is one drop that I put on my tiny screwdriver just like that I get a tiny drop on there then I go ahead and I do the inside. See, this one's already from washing. It's tight. It ain't supposed to be tight. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a little mystery oil on there and work that in there. There, now it spins freely. And the thrust washer, there's a, there's a little, little corrosion on there too, so I'm going to hit that with another drop. That thrust washer helps it spin nice and smooth, so we don't want to lose those. Uh, so generally, when I take the worm out, I take this one off, and I usually don't wash it, just because it's so easy to lose and really hard to replace. So put that washer on there, and I'm going to hit it with just a drop my mystery oil not too much I don't want this oil spreading around later I just want enough on there to 
give it a turn. Okay, that's one. I keep this blue uh, microfiber like washcloth, and it seems to keep these little parts in place where that, so I don't lose them. Because let me tell you, doing this, you are going to lose parts over time, and it's after you've lost some parts that are really hard to replace that you will learn to use a little cloth like this. Now I've got one special one here and this the reason why it's special is because it was missing a coupling and I decided that we needed to show that all is not lost when you're missing a coupling. Here is a piece, two pieces of plastic pipe what I did was I took my tap and die and I put the little pipe and I threaded it and then I took the big pipe and I and I cut threads into it and then I screwed them together and then super glued it. Then I took from my Katie 246 set, I went ahead and took the tap, tapped a little hole, threaded hole in the end, which guess what? Just so happens it fits perfect. Now, I already knew that, and that's why I did it. And not only that, this SD40 will knock and we get them in place here, and this coupler will work just fine. Now, this SD40 is also missing the drive shafts. Probably not missing, I just don't know where they are. And this, this makes a good time for a demonstration. We're going to go ahead and make drive shafts out of plastic pipe and piano wire. Um, you can buy them, but since I already have plastic pipe and piano wire on hand, there's no reason to, to do that. And it's a good chance to show you guys that you don't need to invest tons of resources into these into, into a fix like this you need to think like an old school woodworker if you don't have it then you need to make it you need to go ahead and learn how to make some of these parts yourself and when you can do that you will look at projects in a whole different way say I can fix that or I can I generally when I go to a train show I try to find the one locomotive that is mostly there but the you know the price on like two three dollars because it appears to be too broken to fix and I don't believe there's anything that's too broken to fix this SD40 probably would have been one of those missing some couplings and that's probably how I got it it's one of those things where it's like it's way too much trouble to fix it, but it's not. And with the 24 volt motor, this thing is going to be a very nice runner. Okay, so now I got it ready. I've washed all the gears. Um, I did a little degreaser first, then I did some some dish soap and toothbrush. <clears throat> washed them all. I have a spot in front of a fan that blows slowly, so I set them there, and they're completely dry now. So now I'm going to go ahead and put them in here. Um, if you are not sure how they go back together, take a picture before you take it apart. But otherwise, they're really pretty simple. And the SD40 of, of the AHM, IHC, Model Power, um, all those six axles, this, has got, this one has the most gears in the gearbox. So I'm going to take my screwdriver here and I'm going to take a little bit of this red grease. Which I think it is lithium, the same stuff I've been using on every other project. And first I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my screwdriver here and I'm just going to wipe it on the worm a little bit. It'll work its way in. Remember the goal is to get the grease on there, but not so much that this grease will spread later. When I opened this thing up, it had been oiled and greased. Um, it went and definitely had been, uh, people use Labelle 106 a lot. I personally don't like that, that lube, um, because when it gets hard later, 
which it does it like turns to amber so I like to get just enough grease on there and it will spread around get this grease on these gears just a little bit you don't even have to do all of them. this grease likes to work its way around and it doesn't drip which is the nice thing about it um, the label especially when it's new will splatter quite a bit and over time it drips and drips towards the bottom and you'll find in the bottom of the truck in the side frames usually you'll find a pretty good hard mass of grease in there and I just need a little bit once I get this worked in there it will do its job then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take two of the geared trucks and I'm just going to do just a tiny bit you don't have to hit every tooth just hit a few of them all the wheels have been polished with metal polish and I use a little jig then I like to paint the ends with a and the side frames on this case they match I used some rust-oleum extra flat super dark brown camouflage paint it was like three bucks at Walmart um, and it, it it looks pretty cool when it's done and I made the fuel tank match also so that's what, that will be my base for weathering all right now to put this together the one gear that has two gears on it that is your idler that means it goes it connects to the worm all gears face down the big one is at at the front so let me just drop them in there and as you notice some of them are different colors that color doesn't matter some are white some are black all they're interchangeable okay now that is how they go in there all of them big side down everybody goes down everybody goes down that's kind of a rule in most power trucks and I fit the worm in there gotta get the little couplings at the end of it matched up and in she goes now these covers these little tabs here the ones that hold it on they break off like nothing they will break with they're just you're probably gonna end up breaking off both of them so you gotta be really careful with them if you do break off both of them it is not the end of the world what you would do is you would put the cover on even without any tabs and you would use something like E6000 or shoe goo goop to hold this on because that you can pry up later it does a really good job of holding in place and you can take it off later with a little effort so that's that's how you would do that okay then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to spin the coupler here and I'm going to get get my grease going around and just a few turns later I'll put it on a motor and we'll test them and that's all you do so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do I have two sets of trucks out here so I'm going to do the other ones and then we'll, we'll get on to the next part alright so I got a little grease going add my wheels I'm actually not going to add the wheels yet because we're going to add some power pickup to this alright moving on